Hi, I'm Ryan Horner. I'm Josh. Adam. Um, so for our EC System 60 final project, we decided to implement an FPGA on an FPGA. Um, sounds kind of ridiculous, but it um, is. Yeah, we were inspired by a paper by Adrian Thompson, where he used um, his, an implementation to um, run a genetic algorithm and essentially differentiate between different frequency inputs that were a greater time span than the FPGA could actually do in a single clock. Um, so nowadays, most FPGAs have encrypted bitstream, so you can't really access the actual programming side of it. Um, but actually, implementing an FPGA on an FPGA allows us to program it however we want to, um, so we can actually run genetic algorithms on it. Um, so for our FPGA, we modeled after the XC6200 FPGA, which was one back in the 90s. Um, it's pretty simple. It has a simple CLB, which can do any um, register operation, any much of two inputs, or um, a functional and or um, XOR, those kind of things. Um, and we managed to get up to a 12 by 12 array of these um, logic elements um, for 144 elements. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, like you said, we have a 4,032 bit bit stream where we can program uh, pretty much any uh, FPGA uh, function on there. Uh, do you want to show the adder off? Sure. So, as a sort of proof of concept, um, we programmed a three bit um, adder um, composed of uh, um, propagation yeah. carry of a single full adder. Um, so, here we have it wired to the switches and to the hex display. So, the bottom three switches are your A input, the next three are your B input. Um, so, here if I make A1, 0 plus 1 is going to be 0. Um, if I make them all, uh, if it's 7 plus 7, it's, it's displaying it in hex, so it's up at E. Um, so I set it so that the carry out is included in the output here, so it's a four bit output. Um, but here if we do three plus uh, two, we get five. Um, so this is the adder running on an FPGA on an FPGA. It seems like a simple thing, but Ryan spent all day yesterday getting the exact bit stream right. Because so because Ryan right. had to be the compiler. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Ryan was the compiler. compiler. So instead of Cordis or, 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 or Xilinx tools, we had Ryan. Correct. Okay. Exactly. But another way that we could, you know, generate a, uh, that, that bit stream to put on there is if you look to your right, right now, there is a genetic algorithm running. This is also, like, the problem that this one is solving is inspired by Adrian Thompson's paper that inspired this whole project. Uh, this genetic algorithm is trying to distinguish between a 1 kilohertz uh, clock and a 10 kilohertz clock. And it is just uh, setting that on the uh, FPGA and reading an output. Yeah, and when you say it is setting it, you mean the HPS. The HPS. The, yeah. the hard processor system on the FPGA mm -hmm. is now handling the hardware. Yeah, this hardware. whole genetic algorithm is running on the HPS. So it's uh, directly communicating with the PIO ports to um, directly program the FPGA on our FPGA, through our FPGA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's going to take a, a little while to run because genetic algorithms just need a few thousand generations. But yeah, we okay. should uh, do some for it. And when you were doing building the adder, Ryan, did uh, you had to do the place and route yourself? You had to figure out how to how to work within the routing constraints of the of the simulated FPGA. Yeah, correct. Still on that whiteboard so yeah, over there. Whiteboard. Um, but it basically drew up. So the way actually it's broken down is you have your individual log elements, and then those are sort of grouped together into 4x4 four four blocks. Um, so I want to try and fit a single bit full adder in one of those 4x4 four four blocks and I could just stamp that down over and over mm -hmm. um, with the carries. Um, and I basically knew you need two XORs, an OR, and two ANDs. Um, so those it's, those themselves take up individual COBs and then routing every other signal around is just really trial and error. So, As it is in the real compiler. Correct. Yeah. All right. Thank you.